So today's our topic is microbiology of fruits and vegetables. So in this topic, we will cover general microbial profile of fruits and vegetables. That is the microflora present on fruits and vegetables. Then what are the different types of spoilage? Then what is the mechanism, general mechanism of spoilage? And how the preservation can be done? So firstly, we should see why the fruits and vegetables are a very important source. And they are very much, uh, they can be contaminated by the microorganism, they can be infected by the microorganism. Why? Because they are an excellent source of nutrients. So they are natural source of minerals, vitamins, and along with the carbohydrates and other essential substances. Many fruits and vegetables present nearly ideal condition for the survival and growth of many types of microorganisms. Naturally fresh fruits and juices that made, the, made out of them contain high amount of water. When the water is present, excess water is present because water is required in the fruits and they are the essential part of the juices also. So because of that uh, moisture contain that amount of water, they can be highly attacked by the microorganism. They are prone to attack by the microbes. While most of the fruits and vegetables, one more important thing is there that they are provided with the coating and covering in form of skin. If you see that the every fruits, every vegetable, they have the skin in the outer sh outer uh, most layer. Okay, so that is also a protective covering, and that is naturally present in them. But these are very fragile. It is not very uh, strong. They are fragile enough to be disturbed by the various biological and mechanical factors. So, like vegetables, fruits, being produced of the part, they also get contaminated through the different sources by the variety of the microorganism which may play a significant role in their spoilage. So these are the points which, in which we have covered like why the fruits are very important, fruits and vegetables, they are prone to be attacked by the microbes because they are excellent source of carbohydrates, water, min minerals, vitamins, so they can be attacked by the microbes. And one more thing what we have seen that they have the naturally present protective co covering over them. But this coat in the natural condition it will protect them from the microbes but they can be disrupted during the processing or during the other process. Okay. Or during the storing, storage or any all these things. Now fruits and vegetables they possess an outer protective epidermis typically covered by natural wax cuticle containing the polymer cutin. Okay, so these are the natural protective mechanism that is present in the food. Now if you see the general microbial profile of the harvested fruits and vegetables. So the vegetables if you see the number of the bacteria which are present are the range of 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 7 and that is present per gram. And if you see the num uh, presence of moles in the vegetable per gram, in the vegetables, that is 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 4 microbes per gram. Now coming to the fruits, bacteria content that is present in the harvested fruits. So it is 10 to the power of 7 bacteria per gram. And if you come to the mold, it is again 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 4 per gram. So this was all. This way we can say what is the microbial profile that is present on the fruits and vegetables naturally. Now the, how the deterioration results? Deterioration of the raw fruits and vegetable that may result from the physical factor, action of different enzymes, their own enzymes because they all have the enzymes inside them. They have whole mechanism, they have whole machinery, sugar is there. So the sugar, uh, all these enzymes are also present, microbial action and or the combination of all above three factors. So mechanical damage that can be result from the action of animals, birds, insects or from bruising, wounding, bursting, cutting, freezing, desiccation or the mishandling. So previous damage by the plant pathogen may also take part in the as a food unfit for the consumption. Okay, so all these things are the or one or one more point is there that contact with the spoiling fruits and vegetable. So if the contact with the spoiled fruit is there or the vegetable is there, what will result? It will result, it will bring about the transfer of organism from healthy or 
transfer of organism from infected or contaminated or spoiled fruits slash vegetable to healthy fruit slash vegetable. So what will happen? The healthy fruits or vegetables, they will also get infected and they, they will also uh, spoiled. Now, the, in this uh, uh, slide, we have uh, tried to understand like uh, what are the different factors which are present in the food. Okay. So, what are the different factors which are going, which are uh, present in the food additionally like if you compare fruits or vegetables from other food uh, substances, you can see that fruits and vegetables they are rich in many things. What all are these? They, are, they have polysaccharide, they have cellulose, they have hemicellulose, they have pectin, they have minerals, they have high water content and they are fragile. So all these are the factors which are present in the food. Now if you see the natural protective barrier that are present in the fruits, these are the cutin of the skin and epiphytic organisms. Okay. Now if you see the what are the different sources of the spoilage or the their uh, how they can get spoiled so disease plant har during harvesting from the soil processing equipment packaging and contact with the spoiled fruits so these are the different factors these are responsible for their spoilage now coming to the form of a spoilage how they are uh, we can say that the this uh, fruit or vegetable they have got spoiled this could be result in form of bruising, puncture or cracks. Now what are the spoilage mechanism? That is here we will see in general how the spoilage takes place. So the structure of the fruits and vegetables they comprise mainly of the polysaccharide, hemicellulose and pectin and the principal storage polymer is starch. Now spoilage microorganism what they will do? They will degrade the polymer that is present in the fruit into the simpler form and they will release water. Okay, now what will happen? Then when the degradation is there, then the microorganism will come. They will use this water, they will colonize there and they will create the damage to the plant tissue. Okay, so now the major groups of the microbe responsible for the spoilage are yeast, molds and bacteria. What are the general mechanism? Here we will see like spoilage microorganism, whether it is yeast, whether it is molds, whether it is bacteria. So any of the spoilage organism, what they will do? They will, with their extracellular lytic enzyme that is present in them, whether it is bacterial enzyme on the basis of the organism, spoilage organism, which is going to infect or pectinase and hemicellulase is present in fungi. So with the help of enzyme, these microorganism, they will degrade this polysaccharide polymer and they will release the water. Now, once this degradation is done, the spoilage microorganism will colonize and this colonization will be on the vegetable slash fruits. Okay. So what will happen? Once the colonization of the infective form is there, infectious microbe is there or the spoilage microbe is there, what they will do? They will create the lesion on the healthy and damaged plant tissue. Okay. So this way the spoilage will result. Now spoilage by yeast. If you see yeast, these are the unicellular fungi which normally reproduce by budding. So none of the pathogenic yeasts are there to contaminate the fruit. So all the yeast which are contaminating the fruit or vegetable, they are non-pathogenic. Okay. So these, how, the, how it is happening here? Fruits can be, earlier it can be, it could be damaged by the birds, insects or the pathogenic fungi and they contain very high yeast population. Okay, so then and second factor is the yeast are introduced into the exposed tissue via insects and they are able to use the sugar and other nutrient to support their growth. So the, these are the two mechanisms or uh, um, firstly earlier the fruit is damaged and secondly if the exposed part is there then also the yeast will be attacking. Now the types of yeast growing in the fruit depend on the nature of the fruit and strain of the yeast. Secondly is foliage by the molds. So molds are the aerobic organism and they are very efficient if scavenger of the oxygen. So due to this property, molds pro processed food including those hermetically sealed means their sealing is very strong like the fruits like some fruits are, uh, uh, they are very strongly, their outermost layer is very strong. Okay, so they 
this because of this property they can be affected by the they are susceptible to spoilage by the molds so in case of limited vegetable growth evidence of spoilage may be changes produced by the fungal enzyme such as breakdown of starch and pectin by the in case of heavy growth colonies develop in the head shape or strand throughout so what it will happen if the coating is very strong also so what they will do these molds will degrade that also with the help of the fungal enzymes and they will degrade that outermost strong coating and once they will degrade it they will colonize there and they will infect that fruit or vegetable no bacteria by spoilage this is very common uh, cause or the very common spoilage of the fruits and here various group of bacteria have been ability to grow in the fruits and the juices these bacteria by virtue of their diversity in the metabolism they grow on the fruits and produce different type of compound so the major group which are involved here are the lactic acid bacteria acetic acid, acid bacteria and spore formers okay now general type of the microbial spoilage so the most common or the predominant type of spoilage varies not only with the kind of the fruits or the vegetable but also to some extent with their variety also now what are the type uh, microbial spoilage uh, types so this may be due to firstly the plant pathogens acting on the stem leaf flowers and the root of the plant on the fruits or the special parts used as a food okay so if the plant pathogen has infected these plants these parts whether it is stem whether it is root whether it is flower or any edible part that also one of the type of spoilage that is also one of the factor responsible for the microbial spoilage secondary the saprophytic organism which may be secondary invaders after the action of plant pathogen okay so once this action is done these saprophytic organism will come as a secondary invaders so although each fruit and vegetable have certain type of decomposition and kind of microorganism pre predominant in its spoilage some general types of microbial spoilage are more often in the rest of the vegetables and fruits so most commonly type of fruits spoilage are as follows so here we have seen that the two type of microbial spoilage are there that is because of the primary spoilage that is by the plant pathogen to the any of the edible part of the plant including uh, stem leaves flowers roots fruit or any special plant a part and secondly it is the saprophytic organism that they have coming as they are coming as a secondary invaders means after the first primary plant pathogen has infected it the saprophytes will come as a secondary invader and they will they will again enter the plant or veget uh, fruit or vegetable okay so now we will see the different forms different types of spoilage now in this chart you can see what are the different types of spoilage so firstly the name of the spoilage is given second is the microorganism responsible for this so firstly here we have seen that it is the bacterial soft rot it is caused by the ervinia so bacteria soft rot it is caused by the ervinia kyrotobora so this kyrotobora species it is going to infect the uh, back, uh, and cause the bacteria soft rot and it is resulting in the water soaked appearance okay so that is the mushy appearance it will give here okay mushy appearance and one more organism causing this is the pseudomonas next is the sliminess sliminess that is the second type of the spoilage it is caused by the saprophytic bacteria and here the wetting type uh, feature will appear then the gray mold rot gray mold rot it is called by the botrytis and these are also favored by the high temperature and warm uh, this warm temperature and high humidity then the rhizopus soft rot this rhizopus soft rot it is caused by the rhizopus nigricans or rhizopus tolonifer okay so what will it will also appear in the soft and mushy appearance like this then anthocerus sorry anthocos so anthocos in in this what is happening this uh, sorry anthe c n o s -E, anthocos so this anthocos it is called, uh, causing by the collatotrichum so in this collatotrichum here what is happening it, this is the form of the 
So, what is here? Spotting will be there. Spotting on the fruit will be there. Next is alternaria rot. Alternaria rot is alternaria tenuis and this is uh, here again the growth of the mold will be there and it will be earlier it is uh, greenish uh, this uh, grayish brown here you can see this grayish brown and later it will be converted into the black spot. Then after al alternaria it is the blue mold rot here you can see blue mold rot. This is caused by the penicillin digitatum. So, blue mold rot here it is the masses of the spore of the molds will be appear on the fruit. Then it is the downy mildew. Downy mildew here this is the example of the downy mildew and this is caused by the phytophthora. Phytophthora here what will happen it will the mold will grow in the white or the woolly masses on the fruit. Then watery soft rot. Watery soft rot here you can see this is the Again, it is uh, going to be caused by the alternaria, fumopsis and fusarium. And it, here, this is also found in very common in the vegetables. Then stem end rot. Stem end rot here you can see this. This is the stem end, end rot of the mango and it involves the ends of the fruits like at the tip or any of the uh, edge. Okay. Then black mold rot. Black mold rot again it is caused by the aspergillus here you can see this is the black mold rot okay. So here it is caused by the aspergillus niger it is very common in this what is happening black mosses or the dark brown to black mosses of spores of the molds will be seen. Now then the black rot so this only black rot that is caused by the alternaria and uh, ceratostomella and uh, physelopsora. Uh, Okay, so this is also here it is also caused by these species. Now again it is the pink mold rot. This is caused by the trichothecium here. This is the pink mold rot. Okay, so pink mold rot what is happening here? Pink mold may again pink color uh, pigmentation will be there. Then green mold rot. Green mold rot it is here it is caused by the cladosporium or trichoderma and in this again green spores molds will be there then brown rot then it is also sclerosinia and it is ca caused by the uh, this species and it is again the brownish coloration will be there. So all these are the types of different type of spoilage these are the types of spoilage and here we can see the appearance of the spoilage will be on the basis of the names given to them. Okay, so names also you can uh, or vice versa also you can say if you know the name you can very easily uh, um, identify the which fruit it is related with or which vegetable it is related with. So in this slides we have seen what are the different types of the spoilage or, uh, of the fruits and vegetables. So that's it for now. Thank you.